Hey guys! So, I know I haven't been making as many videos as I normally have lately, but I've just been caught up with things. But I'm going to try to keep up with my videos and be a little more consistent. Um, but the video I'm going to show you today is going to be another tutorial, since everyone seemed to like my castle tutorial. Only this is going to be a tutorial on how I use chalk pastels. Basically what I'm going to show you is the two basic and really only techniques that I use in all of my drawings, which have to do with blending and layering and they're really not that hard and I struggled with how to explain exactly uh, how to utilize these techniques so sorry if the video seems a little boring but the techniques really aren't that hard it's just a lot of people don't know them so I hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you're wanting to get into chalk pastels then I hope it helps Okay, so basically what I'm going to do first is show you a few different products that I've used at least once in every single one of my YouTube videos, and then I'm going to show you clips on how to use all of these products. So the first product, obviously, would be some chalk pastels. I use New Pastel. It's a very good, basic, and relatively cheap brand you can buy almost anywhere, any art store or any craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, you might even be able to find them at Walmart. They're really easy for anyone to use, you know, if you're beginner, advanced. I always have like a box of probably have, like five around here somewhere. Um, but it's just basic colors of pastels, nothing fancy. Um, yeah, first clip I'm going to show you, I'm just going to uh, actually show you the difference between pastel, what it looks like when it's not blended and when it is blended. And I'm just going to use my fingers to show you uh, the blending part of it. But I'm going to draw two flowers, one is going to be, again, not blended, other one blended. <laughs> so here's the first clip. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to go ahead and just draw two basic simple flowers, and this one I'm going to draw now is not going to be blended at all. Um, so let me just go ahead and speed this video up a little bit so you can just see the basic flower, and then the second one I'm going to draw, I'm going to go ahead and blend. And we have our basic flower, not blended whatsoever. And I'm going to go ahead and replicate the same flower, only this time you're going to see me blend certain parts of the flower. And then I'll show you an overall difference between two flowers. Let me just speed this up. Draw a basic flower. And I'm going to go ahead and start blending here, just like blend the uh, stem and the petals a little bit. And this tool that I'm about to use, um, I'll explain it a little bit later, but basically I'm just going to clean up the edges of the stem a little bit. Alright, let me speed it up again to get more of the details in there, and then you're going to see me go ahead and start to blend a little bit more with the petals and everything. Okay, and now I'm going to show you, here's the overall difference between the two flowers. I'm going to go ahead and blend the right one a little bit more so you can really see the difference. Um, we just, there we go. It just, you can see how the right one is a lot smoother. It has more of a flow, and then the left one is a little bit more harsh than the right one. Again, I prefer blending most of my drawings, but it really depends on what look you're going for. Going for a more rugged, you know, uh flaky look, then obviously you don't want to blend. And I don't always blend, but again, I prefer blending. I just like the way the colors mesh well together in the finished product. Now that I showed you the difference between what pastels look like when they're not blended and blended, I'm going to show you a few different techniques besides just using your fingers on how you can achieve different styles and textures of blending. As I already said, you can use your fingers, but another tool you can use is very simple and cheap. You can get it anywhere. You probably have them in your house. It's just a Q-tip. Um, I don't really like using Q-tips that often. I did for a period of time, but then I realized how much smoother blending looks, and I'll show you in the next clip um, when you use your fingers instead of a Q-tip. But sometimes I do want to get the Q-tip look for some of my drawings. So this next clip, I'm going to show you four different patterns of like blended colors, and I'm going to show you not blended, fingers, Q-tip, and then a few other things. 
but right now I'm going to compare blending with fingers to blending with a Q-tip. Alright, so first I'm just going to do three different colors and blend them together. And this first uh, pattern I'm going to do, I'm not going to blend it at all, just so you have something to compare it to. And then I'm going to draw three more and I'm going to blend them each with a different technique, as you will see. So let me just go ahead and speed it up and draw the four of them so you can see. Okay, so the first one I'm going to blend with my finger. As I, you know, you saw in the beginning, it's pretty easy to just blend with your finger. Uh, obviously, you want to go with the direction of the pastel. If you did it horizontally, blend horizontally. If you drew vertically, blend vertically. Um, that's why I'm blending horizontally. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Q-tip and same principle blend in the same direction as the pastel. Um, as you can already see, Q-tip lifts pastel really easily off the paper. Um, you can see a difference in the color of blue already. It's like a lighter shade. Um, so Q-tips, they, you know, they blend, but they don't blend as well as fingers, in my opinion. But they do help if you're going for a very, um, like a light or misted look. Because again, the Q-tip lifts the color off the pastel off the paper uh, really well. Like if you just wanted a, a hint of blue without going a lighter shade of blue, and then I would recommend using the Q-tip. The next blending tool I'm going to show you is actually a must-have because not only can it blend, but it also erases. This is a kneaded eraser and it works really well for erasing not only pastel but normal graphite and um, charcoal. And it works pretty simple. I have this like a little piece here. It can be molded into any shape as I'll show you later. Um, but if you get like any color on it or anything, you can just stretch it like this. And it's good as new. So they last forever. Again, you can get them at any craft store. And they can be used not only for blending, but just erasing in general, which helps because a normal eraser does not erase pastel like a kneaded eraser. So need this kneaded eraser. Uh, but anyway, now I'm going to compare uh, the blending techniques of the fingers with the Q-tip against the kneaded eraser. So here's the next clip with the kneaded eraser blending. Alright, let me go ahead and bring the kneaded eraser in. Um, as you can see, the kneaded eraser is more of like a, if you have to use a really light pressure, uh, that's the key when using the eraser, but it's more of a smudger than anything. Instead of blending, it kind of smudges the colors together. So it, it kind of looks a little bit smoother than the Q-tip, but you can still see that the color is more defined as far as blending goes than like with the Q-tip and the fingers. So again, it, um, it all depends on what kind of look you're going for. And you can always mold your kneaded eraser to like a fine point like this, or you can, you know, if, like for fine detail, or you could always reverse it and use the blunt end of it if you want to cover a large area. But it all depends on what you're going for as far as the look of your drawing. So here's the four different techniques of blending that I use most often. Uh, the top left one is not blended. The top right one is blending using fingers. Bottom left is using a Q-tip, and the bottom right is using the kneaded eraser. I prefer, like I said, using your fingers because it gives the best overall blend. Um, Q-tip is uh, lifts more of the color off, but it still achieves the blended look. And the kneaded eraser is more of a smudger. It still blends the colors, but it more kind of like smudges them together more than anything. As you can see the difference in that. So the final blending tool I'm going to show you, I didn't include in that last clip because I don't use it for blending large areas, even though those seem like small areas, those are actually big areas for the tool. Um, it is called a stomp, and basically what it is is just rolled up paper to a fine point. Uh, you might have seen me use it in my anniversary video. I use it for very fine details, like in the face or the eyes. Um, I don't really, like I said, I don't like blending in large areas with it because it's just a point and it doesn't really get much done. I use it as a cheaper alternative to you might have seen these. These are pastel pencils. And these work well if you want to, like, again, like you can just look on the box, get the fine details and be really specific with your shading instead of just blending if you want more of like the sketchy pencil look. But I don't always have pastel pencils lying around and they do get expensive. 
So it's just easier to get a stomp. And I'll show you, there's two different things you can do with it. You can lift the color or you can like take a... Let me show you. You can take a pastel and just like color on it and then bring it onto the paper, as you'll see in this next clip. So I'm just gonna draw a basic eye for you and show you how the stomp works. Uh, as you can see, it is blending the pastel, but as opposed to using a finger, it's a fine point, so it only blends within the lines that you drew. And it just works very well for fine lines or details or points or anywhere where there's really like a small surface area to cover, but yet you want to blend it, that's where the stomp comes in. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw a very basic uh, first layer of eyelashes and then show you how the stomp works to pick the pastel color up and you can just blend with it. Like, um, you can bring the stomp up and make the eyelashes look a lot more feathery and longer without actually having to manually take, like, find a corner of a chalk pastel because chalk pastels will get dull and they will not be able to get in those little details or those fine lines. So again, it's not necessary, but it, it is always handy to have a stomp nearby if you do want to get in those really fine lines and uh, make your drawings a lot more detailed. And you can always just draw over the same lines and bring the stomp and it'll bring the color right back out. Just like that. And let me go ahead and get a closer look for you. And like I was saying earlier, you can take your stomp and you can just color on the pastel to get more color on the stomp. For those like little bitty white spots that are still on your paper that you really don't want a chance to bring in the pastel in there because it's so small. So just uh, take your stomp, color it on the pastel, and the stomp will transfer the color onto the paper. And that's pretty much it. I'll just show you, show you the rest of the eye. Um, but see how like the pastel kind of smudged the pupil a little bit too far out, so I take the stomp back in and correct it a little bit. And you can just always go back in, work the details, and there you go. There's your eye. Alright, so I know I've talked a lot about blending, but that's really the huge thing about chalk pastels is knowing how to blend with them. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about, like I said, only two techniques. The second technique is layering. And the really the only product you need for layering and for just, again, you should have, this is kind of a necessity for any pastel, whether you're going to layer a lot or not. It's called Fixative. Um, you could probably get it. You may not be able to find it as easy as pastels, like the new pastels, but you can get it at any craft store, any art store. Um, the Fixative, what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to put a protective seal over your pastel. And I'll show you in the clip, because if you draw on paper with chalk pastel, put your finger over it, it's going to come right off. But if you put a layer of Fixative over it, it seals it in so the pastel does not come off the paper. So this next clip is going to show you the difference between pastel without fixative with fixative and what happens when you put color on a pastel without fixative and with fixative. So let me just go ahead and blend two different patterns for you so I can just show you the difference. Um, when I spray one with fixative and when I leave the other one plain. I'm going to go ahead and cover up the left one so I don't get any fixative on it and just spray a little bit. And it's important that you let it dry because if it's wet, the pastel may come off or, yeah, just let it dry. <laughs> um, so let me go ahead and show you. And almost no pastel comes off that one. I'll go ahead and show you the left one. And yeah, a lot of pastel gets lifted off the paper and onto your finger. So again, it works as a very good protecting agent if you're just done with the drawing. It's always good to put a very, you know, just simple layer of fixative over it, so just to protect it in the long run. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in a white pastel now and show you the difference of layering over one with fixative and one without. And you can already see the one on the left doesn't look as clear cut as the one on the right. The white lines, um, the three white lines on the right look just a lot better than the ones on the left. And I'm going to go ahead and smudge the ones on the left 
and you can see how they kind of turned into like highlights. And now I'm going to smudge the ones on the right, and you can see that they stay like clear, defined lines, as if you were just taking a black pastel onto a, a sheet of paper. So the fixative not only acts as a sealing agent, but it also allows you to start a new layer on top of what you've already drawn before without ruining the first layer. And that's pretty much all I need to really know about using fixative with layering. Um, it's just applying this technique to whatever you have in your imagination, whatever you want to draw. Pretty simple. And that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to know about the basics of chalk pastels is blending, the different tools you can use, which fingers, Q-tip, kneaded eraser, which can also act as a normal eraser for pastels, and graphite. And a stomp, which can be used for the finer details and layering, which can be achieved with or without, but I prefer with, fixative. So I hope this video helped you if you had no idea how to even start using pastels or if you kinda knew but weren't achieving the right results with blending or layering. Um, you can always contact me through my Facebook, which is, there's a link in the description, or through YouTube. Um, so, hope this video helped and I'll see you next time.